Hello, folks, and welcome to Outside Xbox, where we've just watched Fallout Episode 1. <laughs> Thoughts and feelings, please. I'll have one thought and one feeling, starting with you, Andy. Okay, thought. Um, yes. I love Walton Goggins. <laughs> That's the feeling, Fe Andy. Feeling. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in deeply love. in love with <laughs> Walton Goggins. <laughs> the ghoul is, is someone who has seen the worst that we have to offer as human beings. <laughs> nice. There you go. Fine. Watching, watching the show. Um, so what are we going to do? Spoilers, light spoilers. For the first episode. episode. We're only going to do episode one, yeah. right? We're so. only going to do episode one. We're only going to cover what's in episode one, and I think we'll we'll still try and go cautiously around spoilers. But this is very, very early in the episode, and I think you've seen almost as much in the trailer, so I'm going to mm -hmm. go out and say it. Um, the way Walton Goggins' character pre-Apocalypse is like some kind of like TV He's a movie cowboy. cowboy. Movie cowboy, yeah. I knew you would love that. I, 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 I love... Really, I could tell Andy would enjoy oh, the man. movie I love 1950s movie cowboys. <laughs> I, put yeah. one in, I put one in Deadlands and he got shot through the throat immediately. Nice. Um, no, that he was, too that will was... later come back as a radioactive ghoul in season yeah. two of Deadlands. Um, no, that was great. That is exactly the sort of thing I would do. So I was very pleased with that. A strong opening scene, I thought. Like, really nice way to sort of set it up and, and yeah, kind of harrowing i guess you know yeah uh, seeing the so what's your off. what's your thought and your feeling then mike is it how harrowing My... seeing a city leveled by a mushroom cloud is yeah uh, harrowed is probably the feeling um the thought is i was impressed i was like genuinely really impressed by episode one really enjoyed it um really liked the balance of using stuff from the game and the, the, the ways in which they've expanded the fiction slightly um i thought was was really interesting um and uh, and yeah, I, I was impressed by the sort of the main cast. Um, I thought it it was a strong sort of way to set up those those characters. There's obviously Lucy, who's the sort of vault dweller. There's Maximus, who's the aspirant uh, Brotherhood of Steel guy. And then there is Walton Goggins, aka the Ghoul. And I really like his, you know, the the way his character appears to me, uh, at least, is the idea that he's sort of he was an actor who was a cowboy playing cowboys. Mm -hmm. Um, and now he's sort of become his memories and his roles and his ghoul persona is not the same, you know, caring father, you know, nice guy. He's now like this like badass well, undead bounty hunter. He has been alive for 219 yeah. years. Yeah. So obviously he's changed somewhat. Quite a lot. Isn't that always time. part of the fiction of ghouls? That they, yes, they live. They live, they yeah, live they are. They're basically... Of time. Okay. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're basically immortal from natural causes. You can still kill them with guns and mm. stuff. Sure. Um, and I have killed yeah, many due to the, with guns due to the radioactivity but it's it is interesting because it's basically like this first episode it's like three different shows in three different genres mm. there's like the sort of yes. 1950s like uh, vault set society thing where they get invaded by the raiders then there's this sort of like Vietnam war like boot camp movie yeah. and then you've got this like trad western at the end so it's like three yeah. different things all mashed together and obviously that's going to open out and they're all going to combine but it did feel quite siloed in this, mm. in yeah. this first episode it, it's, I think that is quite challenging to have three characters and you know to avoid the kind of unevenness and of having three disparate storylines mm. I think my I'm going to say my favourite of the three kind of silos, as it were, was like was the vault. Mm. I thought the vault was really beautifully like imagined. I think Lucy is a really like engaging character, a kind of competent but naive vault yeah. dweller who really loved... buys into the, the vault tech vision. Yeah, or you know, I loved it at the start vision. where she was um, ex basically explaining her character build. Yeah. She was like, yes. oh, I'll put all my points into repair yes. and science and <laughs> yeah. speech. And this is why I'm eligible for marriage. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm really good at this. That felt like a real, like, tribute to people who've played, like, mm -hmm. especially the start of, well, the start of a, the Fallout game, essentially. It was also um, exactly the kind of character I would make, like, repair, science and speech. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> put all the points stats. into charisma, yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the bit where she was explaining that until you get to a certain age, you just kind of mess around with your cousins. Yeah, there was a, a lot more manner. incest <laughs> chat than I was expecting from a mainstream I'm glad they. Show. I'm glad they finally addressed <laughs> yeah, it exactly. in these vaults. It's, it's happening. Why is no one talking about it? I mean, it's bad news. They if, went there. You know, because it's something I'm sure we'll talk about later, but the, this vault is sort of connected to another vault and they have these yeah, triennial right? trade Two things. other vaults, but like, apparently. If, if, 
if the only way they can avoid the cousin fooling around is by trading their breeders between the two vaults, they're not trying to avoid it, Mike. It's just the thing you do before you get married. (laughs) I thought that was quite like a, 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 obviously like um, a weird but quite daring bit of like black humour, which I appreciated, and it was something like novel. I guess that's not something the games have really gotten into. Mm, Not so much. Um, Not so much, and. Yeah, I thought it was a big upheaval that like the the vault has like a neighboring vault, two neighboring vaults. Mm-hmm. Now that I thought was like potentially controversial. It's interesting. Yes. But we were talking about this earlier, and we were saying obviously it's not that every vault tech vault is networked. It's not like a big underground network mm. of, of vaults. It might just be that these three vaults, thirty three, and then was it thirty one and thirty two? Yeah. That's part of their kind of experiment mm. that they happen to have three vaults that are, you know, connected in some way and, and then have very, very limited every, yeah. access to each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we don't we don't know exactly how vaults work. Yeah, yet. I mean this is all set in but... California and I don't think mm. we've seen many vaults in California in the in the game. Um No. Not that I'm aware no. of. I mean there's not been a sort of main game set in California. There've been sort of mentions of vaults that are in uh California. But um, I think yeah, so it it could be that this is this is part of the experiment, like the trading yeah. people between vaults to see how that works out. Because like, if you are unaware of the vault premise in uh, these Fallout games, is that they were initially presented as um, survival uh, places for people to go, but they were using the captive population to run psychological experiments on them. Vault Tech, the company who mm. runs it, were so presumably that's going to come out in the show as well. It's going to turn out because there aren't. I don't think there are any. Maybe there was one control vault, but all of them are just basically horrible psychological experiments. Yeah. So, yeah. so there weren't like a bundle of just like nice vaults for nice people, I for think, rich people. I, anyway. I mean, probably well, the vault I mean, tech staff had yeah. a, had a nicely appointed plush, you know, yeah. livable vault. But yeah, everyone else was just being put there. Well, I the wondered if that's maybe what what they're getting at is that it is in like California, and you know, maybe and and, and at the beginning before the apocalypse you're at a sort of well-to-do person's party Mm -hmm. you know i wondered if you are talking about a vault that's like the uh, descendants of like yeah of of wealthy people but there's i don't know vault tech are shady aren't they there's always something going Mm. on definitely something going on yeah Yeah. and that's you know that's the sort of thing that you can turn into a really nice sort of mid-season twist yeah it's just the discovery of like what's actually been going on in the vault you these characters have all been living in I think yes. the- well I mean it's Jonathan Nolan who like you know his bread and butter is like mm-hmm. big twist at some mm-hmm. point so yeah. this is um Mr Mr Westworld we're talking about so yeah you would expect I I yeah. would say I I would say there's no way they'll leave that off the table and the reason I say that is because I am actually like surprised by how much stuff from the game they use in the show like even like incidental stuff like when she's yes. recovering from like a, a a stab wound and she uses like a stim pack which is such a video gamey thing and it has like, the exact sound from the game yeah, as well like exactly the, comp- the compressed air sound from the game yeah and there's there the... was I, I saw there was grognak on the tv yeah. at mm-hmm. the kids birthday party there's cram everywhere mm. i want to say all, all the kind of food products yeah. uh, that are all over the place so one of the raiders uses a jet, jet inhaler yeah, before jet he inhaler. attacks somewhere, yeah these are is... not people who are like casual about doing their video game yeah. references and i think they also included the stupidest gun in fallout the junk jet yeah exactly the, oh yeah the junk jets in it which is like you know <laughs> when you see a guy shot in the chest with like a baby doll's leg <laughs> doll's and you're foot. like yeah. how is this lethal but so that's yeah. that's the reason why i think you know that all the stuff about like vault experimentation and stuff is 100 percent going to come out because they're using so many more like minor throwaway elements of the game than i expected and i don't know if it's just because i'm conditioned that most like Hollywood adaptations of video game properties discard most of it and it's almost like a tone piece or they're like, no, no, well, you know, moviegoers or TV watchers aren't going to want this stuff. It's all nonsense. So we're just going to use the overarching themes and stuff. But this is, this feels so faithful. I mean, I know we talk, talked about the, the interlinked vaults, but like other than that, there's very little in the, in the show that doesn't feel like pulled directly out of the game. And I think it's almost like, reass- it, it made me think, it was kind of reassuring how much they got right with, those fallout games particularly i think the bethesda ones in terms of like tone and theme and, and setting well we are living in like the age of like the last of us the tv show mm. now which it was an extremely faithful extremely successful yeah, yeah. adaptation of that game so i think like the 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 game has changed yeah absolutely yeah yeah it's cool it's it, you know it's cool to see that world kind of come to life in a way that feels like yeah connected it feels like another story in that world but what i will say is that 
it doesn't feel like an entirely different story. I feel like the the sort of the you mean where your dad goes? Yeah, to your dad sleep. goes. And you have to go out into the world. And to you have to go out into the, the world to find yeah. him. And also the the you know the um the raider leader whose name is Mol- Moldova, Moldova, um, Moldova, or yeah, uh, yeah, it, that's it. Um, mm. But so she, when she says to the to Lucy, "You look like your mother." It's clear that like her father has had this other life and has not spent all of his time in the vault, which is obviously the, the sort of plot of Fallout 3. So I thought it was kind of interesting that they are, it's not like a direct like retelling of the Fallout 3 story, but it does seem to take quite a lot of influence, at least at this early stage. I mean, we're only in episode one. I think uh, that's smart though, to take like good elements of the story and then spin it off in new ways is, uh, makes it feel familiar, but new at the same time. Yeah. And obviously they borrow bits from Fallout 4 as well. Like there's a sort of Pridwin-esque like airship type thing which is oh it's absolutely the pretty win yeah um so you know but i i think i feel like they, they're sort of tackling that kind of fallout 3 narrative in a slightly different way which i think i think is quite cool i think the problem they have a problem with the fallout games that is the same as the problem with this is that i just don't care about the brotherhood of steel <laughs> like i just never engage with the brotherhood of steel in those games they always like, like the full metal jacket boot camp stuff it's just a bunch You're of like bothered techno fascists stamping around in power armor i'm like all right have fun i'll be over you here i think the t60s look cool when they're yeah, kind of no, like the... stamping along in slow motion with sparks coming it's difficult out to emote in them though isn't it jets <laughs> coming from above for some reason yeah. yeah and they're like hey we're gonna collect up all the old pre-war technology like circuit boards and stuff and i'm like yeah that sounds fun <laughs> anyway i'll be over here like doing cool i'll be exploring ruined vaults what I'm interested in with the Brotherhood of Steel is is them getting more into the kind of like quasi-religious sort of elements of their like techno-fascism, um, mm. which I think, you know, they, they sort of, it's obviously like part of the game, but I never feel like I, you know, you really explore what their motivation is. Are they is. really religious though, or is it just like the trappings of a yeah, religion? It's, it's like the aesthetic of a religion, but actually, you know, they're all about old technology. It's difficult, yeah, it's difficult to know. I, I sort of want them to explore it, but they've definitely got this sort of the r- sense of ritual, you know, when the guy becomes the squire and he's like branded and stuff like that, and they're sort of brushing him on the chest with some sort of thing. It's like, yeah. they definitely, they have all the, yeah, they all the those, all the trappings of a sort of religious order. I'm just interested to see how much they kind of explore that stuff. And I think the other well, thing that's interesting is that all these three stories, I think, are going to end up meeting like sooner oh, yeah, rather than later. Because there's this, there's this target, isn't there? There's this guy that the the Brotherhood's looking for, a scientist. Who's got dog meat with him. Yeah, who's yeah. got dog meat with him, who's escaped from the Enclave. Um, mm. And I suspect, you know, there's this stuff about um, the Raiders knowing Lucy's father. I suspect it's all going to sort of collide and, and coalesce, like, um, you know. Yeah, the, d- definitely, absolutely, 100%. The other thing to note about the Brotherhood of Steel is they're fanatically opposed to super mutants as well right which that's like the other core pillar of the brotherhood of steel is killing (laughs) ghouls ghouls and super mutants right so the characters of walton goggins ghoul and aspirin maximus are going to be i think diametrically at odds at odds with each other already um and presumably they will bring in super mutants as well because that's a kind of big thing in in fallout so that'll be both literally and figuratively a big thing yeah but then you get you know there you get intelligent super mutants who you can have a conversation with and these the brotherhood of steel are like no they have to all be wiped out so mm. it's, it makes it hard for them to be a sort of sympathetic faction yeah. i don't think they were even uh. i don't think they were presented as particularly sympathetic in this episode do you know what i mean i don't know go on go on reddit do they I'm all sure love them? Be people people yeah a lot, a lot of people really love the brotherhood of steel <laughs> that's wild yeah. um yeah. yeah i i um i'm looking forward to seeing how this sort of narrative with this scientist guy kind of and yeah, what kind of a scientist over. he is, what he's doing. Yeah, exactly. Is it going to be bringing, like... What did the like... Enclave get up to in the games? Um, was it synths? What's their wasn't, whole deal? Wasn't synths no, that the was whole... the Institute. Oh, that's the, the Institute, yeah. The Enclave was, like, the government that... Re- um, they had that robot president. President, yeah. And they oh, were, I think yeah. they, were develop- they, they were developing the FEV, right? The forced evolutionary virus. Okay, um, so which bad is the thing science that, is what well, they're What's the thing to. that makes super mutants, but also they were trying to uh, make the GEC, the Garden of Eden creation kit, mm. which would turn, yeah. like, which would re-wildlife the wasteland, mm. make it all green yeah, and yeah. nice again. So that okay. was the sort of... That was the main thing, I think. So I presume, like... It'll be something to do with the Gek, I would have thought, or the Force. There'll be some sort of technological MacGuffin, Mm. and it will be about um, curing all the super mutants. Or or purifying the water. Purifying the water, turning the wasteland into an Eden again. The Gek. That that kind Mm. of thing. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Yeah, I I guess we'll see. But, I mean, that's, you know, 
that's one of the interesting ideas that Fallout has, and I think it's you know just gold lying there on the floor waiting to be picked up if you're Jonathan Nolan. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely delicious gold. Um, I I thought there probably weren't as many people as I imagined being in a vault in Vault Thirty Three. Mm. If everyone was at that wedding, it was like. I don't know, what, 100 people, something like that? Yeah, I that. mean, vault populations um, did vary by by vault. So yes. some of them, uh, ge- generally, it would be about 500 people, I think. But yeah. um, I, if they you've went only smaller got for different experiments. Yeah, if you're going to have to, if you're going to avoid, like, um, uh, too much Cousin play. Uh, inbreeding. <laughs> yeah, there were some vaults that, like, <laughs> put in play. twice as many people as, as it could. As it could fit, yeah. Yeah, there were some vaults with, like, a thousand people in them just to right. see yeah. how that shook out. I thought this was quite a pleasant one. It had a cornfield. It had, like, picnic yeah. tables. Mm. It had a big projector Sky that projector. made you think you were outside, yeah. mm. you know. Because otherwise, everyone would be surely, like, everyone in a vault would be, like, have no vitamin D all day long. They would just be, like, yeah, very, yeah. like, deficient yeah. and no Bristle bones and all the rest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hard to stay healthy in a vault. It's yeah. got to be. But if they go, yeah, if they're growing corn and stuff, then you know yeah. they show them like cycling on their little um, exercise. Uh, oh, exercise when they're at home and they're, they're watching, watching TV. T- TV yeah. yeah, that was cute. That was a cute yeah. detail. That's nice. Yeah. What did you think of the raider attack? I thought it was so fabulously <laughs> obvious that Monty was a ba- was bad even from the outset. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> all of the vault. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's doing and the dishevelled. Yeah, he's doing the like goma pile like Full Metal Jacket yeah. stare. You know, it's like, <laughs> like all of those vault thirty two guys. You're about to get red weddings, everyone. Get out of there yeah yeah it was a little obvious but um i i guess that's a little treat for the audience that they get to feel kind of clever kind of sm- yeah having seen it coming, i did i know? did like how the brother um lucy's brother went to the other vault and it was exactly like when you go into any vault in fallout yeah. there's just bodies yes. everywhere and you, yeah. it was like environmental storytelling everywhere yeah. and you're like oh okay yeah, he was the video game player in that scenario it's bad yeah. news over here yeah. i enjoyed the kind of level of like comic violence oh, that yeah. they're, they're hitting like i think it's just it's it's just right like it's quite nasty it, it's quite nasty yeah. you know, i think which is appropriate um i like yeah, the people the, getting forks in their yeah, eyes the image and, of the know, fork in the eye stuff. pregnant lady yeah. firing a machine gun was like mm. was one of the standout Compelling. like <laughs> yeah. images of the of the episode i, th- I loved it when um uh, Walton Goggins kicked the, uh, the coffin back into the grave and dragged um, Bubba from Forrest Gump back into the <laughs> into the grave with it. That was great. <laughs> it was excellent. Yeah. Mm. Um, no, I, I yeah, I thought the uh, all the sort of fifties Americana, the sort of like Pleasantville esque, you know, um, cheeriness and stuff. I just thought came across really, really well. Worked really well in a TV show in the same way that it works well in the games. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love that. So, what do you make of Karl McLaughlin? Do you like him? I know you enjoy you enjoy him as a person, as a performer, Andy. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought he was. He I was thought good. he was great. He had a um, he had a kind of lovely avuncular older gentleman vibe that I think is probably going to turn out to be at odds with his actual character, as Mike says. Yeah. Um, mm. But yeah, I think uh, I think he was great. Just yeah. seemed like a really devoted doting dad. I, and then I was slightly worried he was going to be dead by the end of the first episode, but then they tranquilized him and dragged him off. And I was like, oh, we're fine. We're you don't fine. kill off Carl McLaughlin no. in the first episode. Yeah. Right? I was, was going to criticize. I was going to criticize the show for having yet another dead mother, because that is like, I want to say it's about seven out of 10 shows and films mm-hmm. of, of all shows and films that get made. Let's like start with a dead mum mm. because it's like the writers are like, eh, we can't be bothered writing a mother character <laughs> and a father Unless, character. Unless, Jane, but is she, is she what, definitely dead or is, is she, she out in the really wasteland? Dead? Is she like a wasteland trash bag queen? Like, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is she a, an is army she of Mad Max raiders? raiders. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is she a rival I could be, raider? I could be way off. Yeah, that is true. That is absolutely true. And, and also, it's, I mean, that's literally Fallout 3 is like, did your mum dies... Early. She dies in childbirth. childbirth yeah, yeah. Like that. um, yeah. That's. Cl- I mean, that's classic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Dies in childbirth is like mm. tick. Yeah, got um, that. But no, um, I mean, it, there's there's clearly stuff going on with, you know, the 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 raider leader knowing, oh, knowing yeah. what her mother looks like suggests that yeah, you know, this is, this character, at least existed in some sense, you know, yeah. outside of the vault and. Yeah. all this stuff so i like the bit where lucy was like i could pop my vault boy back on which i thought you i, I she took hers off more than i i think a vault dweller's doing Pit i feel boy. like you put yeah, it boy. on pit boy sorry yes um i feel like you put it on and then it just stays on you yeah so, yeah um she's kind of popping it on and off all the time but where she like put it on and goes like checks checks her guy's like, radio radio radio. husband <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're like whoa i'm gonna maybe do that surface. beforehand you know <laughs> like <laughs> before you before you've <laughs> yeah had it away with them yeah. Just yeah. give them a bit of a sweep yeah yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, so generally it's a thumbs up 
yeah, for me. Yeah, I'm excited to see more of it. I think it, you know, like I said, it, 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 it sort of delivered on what I hoped, which was a, a faithful representation of the game world, like an intriguing story, characters like I can get behind. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to see more. Mm. I can't imagine another actor being so magnetic. Uh, when you have to look up his CG nose hole as much as <laughs> Walton Goggins and, and remains like so charismatic and so magnetic on screen. Mm. So that is um, massive kudos, kudos to that actor. Kudos yeah, to the he Goggins. really does steal the show. What's the implication yeah. that someone had chopped his nose off, like dug him up and chopped his... You know the bit about like uh, this guy keeps digging him up and chopping bits off him and then burying him again? That was weird. Yeah, I, I thought know. it was just like decay, just like the standard course of being a ghoul. That's what I like, initially assumed. None team? of the ghouls in the yeah, game have, have noses. noses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but then they've also got the terrible ghoul voice as well, which yeah. they didn't... Ah, 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 hello. Yeah, and they Walton didn't Goggins give them that, like, which is... Doing that. I'm not, I'm not doing the ghoul voice. Well, that's the thing. When you cast someone like Walton Goggins, it's like you don't want to cover him in a load of prosthetics. You don't want to give him a weird yeah. voice. Yeah. You know, yeah. you want to... If you hire Walton Goggins, you want Walton Goggins. So I think mm. they've hit the sweet spot between having him look like a ghoul but also yes. looking like Walton Goggins so he can do his normal performance yes what, I, what I've heard and the vibe also that I think you just get from watching the show is that there's going to be a lot more like flashback yep. like pre-war mm-hmm. pre-apocalypse flashback which I think is really interesting mm. because that is something that the games couldn't do you know you, you, you're much more limited mm. in you know you, you're not jumping around a timeline. Well, there's the, the famous games. opening of Fallout 4, which is... Yes. Yeah. You know. A glimpse of that world. Yeah. But I think the show is going to do a lot of, like, jumping forward and back in time. Mm. I mean, in the... So tr- you'll, see a lot of, you'll see a lot of Walton Goggins with a nose, is yeah. what I'm saying. Mm. And you'll get a sense of, like, where, what vault Tech was up to in the days before the before the end of the world. Yeah, yeah. in the trailers, he's doing, like, the, the vault Tech advertisements, mm. right, for mm, the vaults. Because mm. he he's a movie cowboy, so presumably that was he's one like of his... The, Spokesman, guy. spokesman, yeah, spokesman, yeah. spokes cowboy. Mm. Yeah. Spokes cow. Before he advertised, Damn, I love the bit where he rode the horse away from the kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's he's riding a horse away <laughs> from a mushroom cloud. <laughs> so, so cool. We all watched it separate, and I was like, Andy's going to enjoy this part. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is Andy's jam. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah, I think the flashbacks are going to be like re- like you say, really interesting because I don't think they, although the the ghouls are sort of immortal, I don't think it's I don't think the games have really like grappled much with like ghoul pre-war backstories or anything like that before so it's a really interesting angle to to approach it from, and it's kind like of like that tissue. um that uh vault tech salesman who comes to your door in fallout 4 mm. oh, yeah. you find him as yeah. a ghoul later in in the game yeah and you know and he's like yeah they didn't let me in even though i worked <laughs> for vault tech yeah <laughs> so, but that that kind of nice. yeah building yeah. out the fiction from the from the pre-war era because it's all mm. you know in the games it's all picking through the wreckage isn't it basically so yeah. um yeah. I'm excited for robots because we haven't actually seen any in the first. Brief, episode. you briefly see one there's in a the Mr. Handy briefly at the party. At the party briefly, the that's right, yeah. that's right. Um, but I know there's a there's one in the trailer and it's voiced by I, I feel like it's Matt Berry, isn't it? Yeah, in it's definitely Matt trailer, Berry. Which I, I I cannot wait for a robot voiced by Matt Berry. Mm. Mm-hmm. And and just generally like robot vibes, Fallout robot vibes will be good. Super mutants, like you say, we haven't seen any of those yet. That that, that ought to be good. Mm-hmm. I guess there'll be a big battle with a super mutant coming up fairly yeah. soon. Um, I, I hear I hear they're going to hit up the super. Duper Mart, which is a Fallout Three That's cool. location, cool. Big, big old fifty supermarket. What are, What are the things you'd like to see from the game? I'd be quite keen to see a sort of. You remember the Tranquility Lane stuff? I, the I think simulation. An, yeah, I think an episode in a simulation like that would be a really interesting thing. Yeah. I also think my favorite thing about the Fallout games is the different vaults. So I would like to, I would like to see Lucy sort of uncover what vault tech is up to and mm. like we see some of these other vaults and what's going on in them mm. that'd be cool the level of technology that is available to people in the world of fallout is so wildly uneven mm-hmm. because you've got the tranquility lane like full immersive matrix simulation yeah. meanwhile the brotherhood of steel are like recovering toasters yeah to like try and scry the pre-war technology yeah, and all the tvs then, are green and green only. yeah <laughs> the dad at the party is using like a flash cube on his camera yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It's so, i love so the glimpse wild. of the sort of la skyline it was like skyscrapers with sort of globes and stuff on them to make mm. them look more sort of that retro, retro futuristic. Yeah. yeah right um, right yeah tranquility lane that'd be cool more experiments like more vaults i think there'll be more of that like you say um environmental storytelling where lucy goes down into a vault to search for something and i wonder what what mad experiment they had going on in here yeah, yeah. i love that stuff thing. yeah and yeah. that that feels like the sort of idea that would appeal to someone who made Westworld, because you know that's basically yes. what Westworld is—is is a self-contained 
like little world mm. that's yes. with a that isn't aware of the world around it. So yeah, yeah. It with, seems with, like the, a, with the difference, like the key difference that in, in Westworld, the, these worlds are created for like the enjoyment of mm -hmm. the customers, whereas in Fallout, they're created for like the kind of perverse like scientific investigation of, mm. of the of the company mm. i yeah. think they're, they're definitely of a piece with each other it's yeah it's nice yeah. yeah nice pairing cool all right so are we gonna do more of this we're we gonna do, do more fallout yeah maybe maybe things? if people want to see it yeah if people let us, know. If you let us know. hear us talk about more fallout um mm. and let us know what you thought of the show if you've been watching it um because yeah, there's what eight episodes of this to come. It's mm. all been dropped at once, so yeah. yeah. And we've so, yeah. also made so many videos about Fallout the video game. So if you enjoyed the show and don't know much about the video games, or you like the video games as well, why not check out some of the videos on screen now? Yeah, if you want to learn more about the actual lore of the games, I've done loads of that. Want to find out about those vaults? Check out this one. It's good. <laughs>